Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, amma ba'da habita fillah, a question was asked, assalamu alaikum, may Allah grant you long life upon Islam, what's your advice for better listening skills? I sit with one of the mashayikh, but my listening skills aren't on the level of understanding everything, so I miss out on a lot, I follow along still and even try to memorize the metan, meaning the text, that's being taught. But I feel discouraged because I can't take notes the way I want. May Allah bless you. Please share some advice and tools to use in tuning up on listening skills. So first and foremost, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also bless you with a long and blessed and prosperous life in Islam. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafiyah wa rizqan tayyibah, wa amin al mutaqabbilan. And first and foremost, uh, it's actually an excellent question and a very easy question to answer. And it seems to me you're already on the right path. Basically, the bottom line is uh, two things I want to mention. First, there's a proverb uh, that the Arabs say, Men jadda wajid, man zara hasad. Hasad. So, whoever... Whoever strives to attain something, they will attain it. And whoever uh, and whoever plants something, you know, they will reap what they planted, reap the reward, meaning the fruit of what they have planted. You're already on the path. The best way to improve your listening is listening. Listening to tapes, listening to le lectures, to strengthen your ability I believe firmly, and and I was at that point. I recall, uh, at one point, as many of us in our studies, that you you're frustrated. Maybe you understood sixty percent or seventy. You know, depends on the person. Could be eighty, ninety percent, whatever the case is, at a certain part in your in in your seeking knowledge, and you get frustrated because sometimes you miss important points that the sheikh says. Or, or you may misinterpret, and this still happens. This still, for me, it still happens. I'm not always going to, it depends on the level of the person's Arabic that they're speaking, depends on the subject matter. For example, I don't, for me, if I were to listen to the news in Arabic, I would only pick up on certain things because my training, my background, what I've spent my years learning is really Aqidah, books of, and Aqidah. So when you talk about Masail and you talk about the issue of takfir and stuff like this, I can read those things and understand, uh, you know, depending on what's, who's discussing it and what's being, you know, the cl classical text and, and what have you, uh, or in certain, you know, fiqh books or whatever the case may be. But there may be other things where I would be very weak in. And that become, because every fin, every science has its own mustalahat, it has its own language. Okay, and this is a that's a very big topic in and of itself. But let's just keep on track of what uh, you're related to what you're talking, what you're asking. So the bottom line is by listening, by immersing yourself, which you're already doing, and it's just about being patient. You're memorizing the matun. You're already ahead of the game. You're doing the right thing. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you. And it's just a matter of you being patient and consistent, patient and consistent. And part of that patience is consistency. So by you continuing, you're, you will, you will get it. Whoever strives, they're going to get that. They're going to get uh, the, that positive end result. So keeping your intention uh, sound and keep in those durus, that's going to, you're, you're going to be amazed how you pick that up. And I'm going to share a story with, about myself where I used to have the, the same situation when I lived in Hail, Saudi Arabia, many, many years ago. And uh, a, a brother, a, a lovely brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and cure him, my companion and talib al-ilm at that time, who lived in Hail, Omar, Bakush, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure him and bless him, Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And we used to go, and he's Aslan, he's Arab, you know, he's Tunisian and mixed. And so for him, the language in general was not an issue. But me, I would get very frustrated, and, you know, and, and the sheikh would realize that. And 
I'll never forget this, and I love, that's the sheikh, I ask a lot of the questions you see that are translated, I usually call him, because I still have excellent rapport with him, and he all, never turns me away, unless he happens to literally be in a dars or something at that moment. And the point being, he gave me, he knew that I was struggling, and I would ask the sheikh, sheikh, how can I improve my reading? And he said, read two pages of Ibn al-Qayyim every day. That's all he said. I said, Sheikh, should I take an Arabic class, to, you know, to improve, you know, to get more in a formal setting and more formal class? He said, read two pages of Ibn al-Qayyim every day. <laughs> okay. Uh, then he just said, be patient. And then he let me be the reader for Shara Sunnah by Imam Baba Hari from the beginning to the end. And I used to read in front of these Saudis and I used to feel very <laughs> uncomfortable. You know, maybe there might have been a couple of Yemenis and stuff like this, but they were mainly all Saudis and then the brother Omar. And the sheikh had me read. That improved my reading skills. It, you know, it, it was just a beautiful experience in finishing the book. And the point being is being patient because you'll just be amazed. You know, and by learning Naho and stuff like this, this is gonna, you're going to, don't worry about for those people who don't, can't read without the Tashkil, you will be able to. And the more that you're, str the stronger you are in Naho, and not just stronger, but I would say that you are having mumarasa, that you're continual in your study. Like me, I've forgotten so much, and I don't really review Arabic like that. So many things I've forgotten in the grammar, and it just isn't on cap like that. But I still, you know, I, I read okay, okay, and not super great. And it depends on the text. Some texts I can read stronger than others, uh, and with with and 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 you know, and give more or less proper Arab. But you know, there's mistakes there. But the Arabs make mistakes. The point is, you want to strengthen yourself uh, with those tools as much as possible. And the, the best thing is what you're doing already by having the mamarasa, by being consistent and not st stopping. And as our Sheikh Abu Salah al-Afghani, when we went to visit him many, many years ago in Medina, I remember at his home and he said, I, I said, you know, he said that a lot of his colleagues that he he used to do Talib al-Ilm alongside. They began at the same time in Kuwait because he's originally, he's Afghani, but he pretty much, I think, grew up in Kuwait. And he is now returned as a sheikh in Kuwait. But anyhow, as a student in Medina, some of his old colleagues would call him on the phone and ask him questions. And he related that to us. And he said, because of the Adam in Qita, the the lack of being consistent because they stopped seeking knowledge so that now their colleague is way above them and they ask him questions and so the point is is, is to be continual and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil bless us all with ilm and nafia and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with jannah for those and forgive us of our sins ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya muhammad